Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Bee Yard. It's been a while since we've done a bee video, but we got some cool new devices here for our bees that I wanted to show you. This is called a broodminder. And if you're a beekeeper, you may have heard of these before. And if not, you probably will sooner or later. So these are really gaining a lot of uh, attention lately. And these are basically a sensor that you put inside of your beehive right above the brood box. And this will keep track of your internal hive temperature and humidity. So you can actually monitor what's going on inside your hive without even opening it. And if your hive is getting a little too cold during the winter time, you can add some insulation or maybe block off some of the ventilation. And if it's getting too humid in your hive, then obviously you can add a little bit more ventilation. So this will tell you a lot of information without even opening the hive. And also we've been using this to see when our hives are starting to make brood. So in the springtime, they really start making more brood and that raises the temperature inside the hive. So I could tell by looking at the, the graphs that I get out of this device here, that this hive, even though it's the, the smallest hive, it's actually got the most brood right now. It is the hottest hive out of our three hives and they're really making a lot of brood. So we are gonna have to add another box here pretty soon because they've got a lot of capped brood in there. So this is a really neat device, but I just wanted to show you how we installed it. And but first let's take a closer look at what it looks like. So this here is just a plastic strip that kind of sticks out. This part here sticks out of the, the hive. And then this is the part that goes inside and it's got a kind of a little circuit board on it with a battery. And every once in a while, I'll come out with my phone and sync this data onto my phone, which then uploads to the Broodminder website. And from there, you can look at all kinds of graphs and data from your hives. All right, so let's go ahead and show you how we installed these. The first thing you'll need to do is go to mybroonminder.com and set up a new account with your email and a password. And then you'll need to add an apiary to my broodminder. And it will ask you for a zip code. And then once you have your apiary, then you can add your hives to the apiary. So in this case, I'm going to be adding two hives to this account. Once you've got that set up, then you could go and install a Broodminder app. Now you have two different choices. You can either do the Broodminder Bees or the Broodminder Apiary. I personally like the Broodminder Bees better, but I know Vino Farm, who also uses these, prefers the Apiary app. So it's you may want to try them both to see which one you prefer. But this tutorial will go through the Broodminder Bees, but the other one is very similar. So now we're going to take our broodminder strip and remove the strip from the battery. And that will activate the battery and start the sensor. And after a few seconds, you'll see a light blinking to let you know that it's working. Now you'll need to set up the broodminder device on your app. So you'll go ahead and log into the app using your broodminder password. And when the device is discovered, you'll have to claim it. And when you claim it, you'll need to tell it what your apiary is and also which hive that you want to set it to. Now the range from the app to the sensor is pretty short. So you do have to be fairly close to the hive in order to read the sensor. And you can see in the app which hives are nearby. So that will let you know which ones are available to sync. Let's go ahead and install those strips. So this is our front yard hive. This was our weakest hive coming into spring and out of winter. And we did give them an upper entrance, but as you can see, they did propolize that over. This is a three box hive and most of the bees were in the middle box. So I did give them a pollen patty a few weeks ago, and they have been using a little bit of that. So 
So you want to put the strips right above the brood box. So in this case, it was the middle box. And it's actually better, I think, to put the strip between two frames rather than on the top of the frame like I did here. So I've since gone back and moved the strips between two frames in the middle. So we're going to put the hive back together and we'll go on to the backyard hive. So this is one of our two strongest colonies. They had the most bees going into winter and they've been eating the most honey from their hive. So they were completely just about out of honey when I checked on them in the spring. So I've been feeding them leftover frames of honey from our other hives and also just started feeding them some syrup. So in this case, they've got an upper entrance and they have been using the upper entrance quite a bit. So I'm trying to position the broodminder so it's not blocking their entrance. Now every few days I like to go out and sync the hives. So if you're using the bees app, if you click on apiaries, there's a sync button at the very top. And if you click that, it will go through and sync all of the hives that are in range. Now we can go over to the mybroodminder.com website and see the graphs. Now this is a tricky part and not something that's easily found. You need to click on your apiary name and at the very top, change it from text to summary. I actually had to get some help from Vino Farm because I could not figure out how to get to the graphs. Now you can change the graph to show three days, seven days, any number of days. You can really see where the hives picked up in heat right around May 28th. Pretty much all of the hives were in the brood zone, which is considered to be 92 to 98 degrees. So that's really when they started uh, brooding up. But you can see that black hive, that's the back number two hive, has been in pretty much the brood range well before the other two hives. So they are really ramping up and will be a really strong hive here pretty soon. So I'm going to need to keep an eye on those to make sure that they don't swarm. So I'll be giving a box to those guys um, here pretty soon. Now there's another website that you can go to to look at graphs, and that is the Mel Melisfera. And that uses the same password as your My Brood Minder. And this one is also a little bit tricky to find the graphs. So on here, you need to click on Explore over on the left, second icon from the top, and then click on raw data in the top left. And then you can click on each of the hives to show all three at once, or you can just view one hive at a time or any number. This one also has various lengths of time that you can select from. I think a lot more than the other one. And you can also custom set your start and end time frames so you can see exactly what you're looking for. And this one also shows the temperature and humidity of the hives. I hope you found this little tutorial helpful. We had a really hard time finding information on exactly how to install the strips and how to set up the application and view the graphs. So if you have a broodminder, I think this tutorial will really help you out and save you from some frustration. So if you just bought one of these or are thinking about buying these, I hope you found this video helpful and at least found it somewhat interesting to see what you can do with your hives with the technology that we have today. Uh, we'll definitely be using these and we'll be doing some splits here probably this spring and I'll be putting this in one of those as well so we could tr keep track of our new splits. So thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.